This is John Black. Um, we're um, port three, I think, of benzyl chlorination. So let's figure out how much energy is needed to break a benzyl carbon chlorine bond. That's the bond you're trying to make. Okay, because you don't want to break that, right? You're making it. So let's see how much energy it takes to break it. And I get this number here. 4.725 times 10 to the negative joules per bond. That means I need, if I have a photon that has this much energy or more, it will break that benzyl carbon chlorine bond, right? Now, what was 400 nanometers? How much energy was it? It was 4.96. Now, 4.96, obviously, they're all times 10 to the negative 19. 4.96 is bigger than this, only slightly. You know what I mean? 4.96, 4.725, they're almost the same number, but it is higher, okay? So 400 nanometers, or UV light, is not, it will work. You know what I mean? It's going to break the chlorine bonds, that's for sure. It's going to barely, if it can barely break this one, it won't break any other bonds, right? <clears throat> but it can break this bond. So that's a no-no, okay? So let's see what wavelength corresponds exactly to this much energy, okay? We use our lambda, uh, uh, <clears throat> this formula right here, which is Planck's constant times the uh, speed of light divided by energy, right? And we plug it in, and we get this, 4.2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. We want to get it into 10 to the negative 9th, so we can convert this meters to nanometers, right? So I change that by 2, I move the decimal by 2. Now I have 420 times 10 to the negative 19th meters. How do I transform that into nanometers? I just erase the 10 to the minus negative 9 and that M, and I put an NM for nanometer. There it is, 420.698 nanometers. So that means any light with a shorter wavelength or the same exact wavelength, okay, will break this benzyl carbon chlorine bond, okay? And that includes 400, right? 400 nanometers. Shorter wavelength, so it's stronger than this. It's obviously enough to break that, okay? So we need something with a longer wavelength than 420.698. Uh, we need something with at least 421 nanometers. That way it's just slightly less. I would even go lower than that. I'm just saying as a range. That's the top whatever, right? 421. So we want somewhere between 421, and remember we said this was how much it takes exactly to do the chlorine, right? Let's put this thing in here, 420.698, So we want somewhere in between 494, I mean 420, 0.698 and 494.61. So UV is not the best for this. I mean, you can see that the, you know, the, it's slightly above to break that benzyl chlorate, uh, carbon chlorine bond. So it's it's still a good reaction, you know what I mean, to use the sun or whatever. But if you want the best results, if you want the best yield, you're going to use something in between these two nanometers here. How are you going to do that? Well, number one, you could just use the sun and just, you know, chalk it up. You're going to get some UV light in there. And, you know, you, you know, it's going to lower your yield slightly. All right, so we know we need between 420.698 nanometers and 494.61 nanometers. And that's in a blue range. Um, you know, it's below uh, UV. UV is 400, and I'm saying 421, uh, or even longer wavelengths. Um, 
so UV would work, don't get me wrong, I'm just saying it will hinder your reaction because you're also breaking the benzyl carbon chlorine bonds that you're making. You know what I'm saying? Um, but keep in mind, when people, you know, in college bring this reaction up, it's kind of a BS reaction, but it's one of the first ones that we're, we had. And so that's how it became famous, and it's always taught no matter what. It's one of the first ones you, you learn. Um, but since it is BS, they really don't go into it much. Uh, but when they do, they never go into chlorinating a benzyl position. They are always talking about these things here, alkanes. And an alkane, you know, when you put your chlorine, you replace the hydrogen with the chlorine, if it's tertiary, the bond, the carbon chlorine bond that you made is a lot easier to break than say a secondary and a, say a, a primary you know what I mean when the chlorine radical is coming to grab hydrogens right it'll grab this hydrogen before any of these and then it'll grab this one second best this one third best and this one fourth best and the reason why is because when it takes that hydrogen what's left has to be stable this is the most stable this is the next uh, most stable and so on and so forth and that's why it'll take these first then these then these then these so when I say you need 420.698 to 494.61 nanometers I mean to do this reaction okay because if you go any uh, if you get a wavelength shorter than that that's more powerful, it will destroy your chlorine carbon bonds that you're making. But over here, you know, when you're doing alkanes, these are higher energy. When you put a chlorine on there, it's going to take more energy to break that chlorine carbon bond. This is just taking a little bit. This is taking a lot more. So these, you know, let's say you get some DCM, dichloromethane, right? You got and you're trying to chlorinate it. Breaking, you know, using UV on that, now let's say 400 nanometers, you're not going to be able to break the chlorine, chlorine carbon bonds that you're making. It just won't, because these are stronger. You know what I'm saying? So when I say you need that specific nanometer to get the best results, I don't mean when I'm talking about these. I'm specifically talking about chlorinating at a benzyl position. Specifically. Okay, because for these, you could use higher, uh, even go up into the UV range, and it'll be great because the bonds that you're making are stronger, so they're not going to be broken apart by your UV light. Now, I'm going to go into how you can make uh, a specific wavelength, uh, a range of wavelength lights from 450 to 475 nanometers. So, you know, this information is useful because it is possible to produce light in that range. And that's right in, that's almost perfect to what we want. Um, but I'll get into that in another video um, called How to Make Blue Light 450 to 475 nanometer. Uh, but for the rest of this video, I'm going to go into, because let's go back to the sun now. Now that we know that UV is actually too much for this reaction. I mean, it'll work, but it's it, we would prefer it to be under the energy to break a chlorine carbon bond that we're going to make, right? All right, so let's look at the sun. We need 421 to 4, I think it was 494 nanometers, somewhere around there. Uh, <clears throat> and the sun, as we said earlier in the last video, produces between 3 and 400 nanometers. That's what passes through the ozone. Okay, now it has to pass through the glass, right? Because it has to go through your apparatus, right? No UVB B comes through. So that UVA is 315 to 400. So that takes it down to 315 to 400 nanometers. It's getting into your stuff. Um, but not only that, only 75% of this gets through. So now it takes you down to... 336.25 to 400 nanometers. <clears throat> so if you wanted to know that, that there it is, but 
in the future, like let's say you wanted to do one of these, put chlorine on one of those, right? You wanted to see, is this strong enough to break one of these bonds? You have to put it into the formula, this nanometers, turn it into meters, and figure out how much joules that is of energy. Then you go to the bond disassociation energy charts and you find out, and when you look at these, you have to get primary carbon chlorine bond. This is a secondary carbon. You just can't look up carbon chlorine bond because if it says that, you don't know what it means. You want, this one's a tertiary. You want to get a tertiary carbon chlorine, chlorine bond and figure out how much it is. Because <clears throat> this is going to be easier to take off than this. This is a tougher thing to take off. That's a, you know, going to take more energy. <clears throat> and you would, you know, you would compare the two. If this is more joules than it takes to break the bond, then you will be breaking these bonds as you make them. I don't think you will on these because these are harder than a, a benzyl carbon chlorine bond. These are a lot harder than that. I don't think it'll be a problem, but I never did the math. But I am going to do a video where I take DCM, dichloromethane, and I add on two chlorines by chlorinating it with, you know, a halogen UV. Uh, well, I don't know if I'll use UV or not. I'll figure out the math just like I did with this video. When I do that, I'll figure it out and see, make sure that I don't have enough nanometers, enough power to, to rip apart the bonds I'm making. All right. But for now, we know that we need 421 to 494 nanometers for, not these, not this, but for a benzyl chlorination. So will it work just using the sun, using this, you know, 336 to 400? Yes, it will definitely work. Will it be as good as just using blue light and cutting all the UV light out? No, it ain't going to be as good. It can't be. It's not possible. You're going to definitely get a better yield using blue light between 421 and 494 nanometers. That's a fact. For these, now that's a different story. Like I said, the bonds are a lot harder to take that chlorine off that you put on. It's not like a benzyl chlorine. So anyways, this is basically the uh, only part that I changed. Um, if you've seen these videos, because I re-put them up, you know, after I caught my mistake, and... Uh, you know, everything else is just going to be a repeat if you've seen the videos previously. Now, I'm going to go back to the chlorobenzene thing here for a bit, just because what I'm going to talk about is so similar. Now, I said that once you turn the toluene into benzyl chloride, that this is more reactive than this. So the chlorine is going to try to attack this and add another chlorine instead of attacking this. This is the opposite, though. When you have benzene and you add chlorine, this actually deactivates the ring. Okay, Why, when you add a chlorine here, it makes it more reactive, and when you add it here, it makes it less reactive? Well, adding things to the ring is a specialized uh, reaction. Okay, You have electron withdrawing groups, and you have electron uh, donating groups that you add. Okay. Now remember, why is this benzene reactive? It's not until you get your Lewis acid in there. The Lewis acid changes something more positive, like the chlorine. So this has to be negative in some way. It's neutral, but because of all the double bonds, you have a lot of electron density in one spot like that. All the P bonds are above and below the plane of the actual molecule. So all that negativity can be... Uh, reactive. Um, but let's talk about these electron withdrawing groups and electron donating groups. Halogens slightly deactivate the ring because they're electro they're so electronegative, right? So they are electron withdrawing groups because of their electronegativity, they grab electron density and try to pull it towards themselves, right? And the reason why the benzene is Reactive is because of its negativity. If you pull some of its negativity away, you make it less negative, you make it less reactive, right?